Well, good morning. As my introducer said, I'm Ronald Williams Garcia, and I'm from the Center for Positive Humanity. And I presented before last August, so this is my follow-up today. I wanted to tell you a little bit about what we've been doing since last August to make the business more viable. So. Wanted to start out with a question to you guys first. And that is, what if you could take your most serious disputes or disagreements with other people and there was a way where you could resolve those quickly without spending a lot of time in court, without spending a lot of time on attorneys and court fees, and most importantly, without making enemies, but yet still be pretty certain of the outcome of the case. That would be pretty cool, wouldn't it? Probably put attorneys out of business. Well, that's what we do at the Center for Positive Humanity. What we do is we do a professional practice of conflict resolution. Conflict resolution is also known as alternative dispute resolution. And alternative dispute resolution is kind of an umbrella term which captures any methodology or any process that you use that help people resolve their, their disputes and their differences and their, and their conflicts without taking them to court and without litigation and all of the negative effects that come from litigation. Within alternative dispute resolution are about five different distinct modalities. The first one is you probably all heard of is called negotiation. Negotiation is when two people sit down and they bargain over something and they go back and forth in a discussion until they get a resolution that is satisfactory to both of them. Usually it's not what one individual wants, it's what both people can come to an agreement on. <coughs> the next step up, if you will, there's a spectrum of conflict resolution. The next step up is what we call mediation. Mediation is when there's a dispute between two parties or more but now you're introducing a third party who is impartial and who has no real connection to the parties other than being there to help the parties to resolve that dispute that day or that time. The next step up is something that I do is called parent coordination. And I'm pretty excited about that. What we do is we work with families who are in the middle of a divorce or post-divorce who have kids who can't come to an agreement. Probably all of you know a family where there's been a, dis a divorce and there's a custody battle and or you heard about it on television where the two parents fight more than they can to work for the best interest of the child. What I do is I come in as an independent third party, I sit the two parents down and I talk with them going through a prescribed curriculum to teach them how to communicate with each other, teach them to do problem solving, and I do what's called a new business. I tell them that their business is the name of that child, whatever it is, John Smith Incorporated, and their job is as board holders in this business to make sure that this business prospers and flourishes. We're pretty successful, and there's about seven of us in the state of Delaware who is doing similar type of work. Most of them, interesting enough, are down here in Kent County. Maybe that's saying something about what happens in Kent County, but most of your parent coordinators are down here and not in the north or further south. And then the last thing I do is called conflict coaching. What I do is I sit down with a person who has a dispute, who really doesn't know how to resolve it. And then anything and everything that they've done previously has just made the dispute worse. I sit down with them and I teach them how to go through the whole process of the, the, of the dispute, looking at it both from their perspective as well as the perspective of the other side, and then prepare them to go meet with the other side and sit down and hopefully resolve the conflict. And then the other, the other thing we do is what we call assessment and training. Assessment is where I can come into your house, or I can come into your business, or I can come into your corporation and use some psychometric tools that I have, some psychological testing that I can do to see what the level of conflict is in your organization or wherever and to give you some suggestions on how you can kind of backtrack or downscale the conflict that's going on in your organization. And finally, training 
It's just coming in and doing seminars like I'm doing here today and talking about conflict, what it is, how come it happens, what we can do about it, and most importantly, how can we protect the relationships even when we have conflict with another person. I want to show you a three minute video on just an example of how mediation works so you can get this to work properly. We explain mediation. We explain mediation. Meet Claudia and Stephen. They work together in one team. Sometimes this can involve heated discussions. Recently, though, the relationship between Claudia and Stephen has deteriorated so much that the entire team is increasingly unproductive. Care must now be taken to ensure the entire project is not jeopardized. A colleague recommends that Claudia seeks a solution to the problem through mediation. This makes Claudia think of spiritual practices upon hearing this term. But then she learns something entirely different. Mediation is the process of solving a conflict with the help of a neutral mediator. Claudia's superior thinks this is a good idea, as he wants the project team to work together constructively. After also speaking with Stephen, he contacts a mediator. The mediator clarifies with those involved how mediation could help them. Claudia and Stephen wish to use this opportunity. Both agree to the mediation process and participate voluntarily. They are aware that they can abort the process at any time, as there is no judge here to pass judgment. Instead, the two parties develop a constructive solution together of their own accord. The neutral mediator ensures thorough preparation of the mediation aims and the framework conditions. These are agreed in a contract beforehand that also includes treating discussions confidentially. As a consequence, none of those involved can lose face among their colleagues. With the mediator's help, both parties outline the problem from their perspective. During the discussion, points are discussed that were previously unspoken. Finally, Claudia now understands the reasons for Stephen's behavior, and Stephen understands Claudia's. The mediator methodically helps them to see the other side differently. They are surprised to establish that they have far more in common than they previously thought. They develop creative ideas on how they can work together in the future. With the mediator's help, all the details are recorded in a written agreement. Claudia and Stephen are pleased. Thanks to the impartial mediator, they have addressed all of their problems openly and listened to one another. Ultimately, everyone is a winner. Claudia, Stephen, and the entire team who can now give their all. Of course, their superiors are also delighted. Mediation can help in many other situations. In fact, it can help everywhere that conflicts arise. In the workplace, for example, in cases of tension between employees and superiors, disagreements between departments, or even legal disputes between two companies. In the private sphere, mediation can help with conflicts in sports, leisure time, or families. Do you have questions on the subject of mediation? We will treat your matter discreetly and confidentially. why we do it. First of all, it takes an extraordinarily long time. I don't know if you've ever been involved in a small claims action or even a, a more serious legal action. It takes an extraordinarily long time for things to come and work their way through the court system. Often it can be years. I know a personal injury lawsuit in Philadelphia from the time of filing to the time it gets to the court is usually about two and a half years. So it, it's a long, long process to take it to court. The other problem with court hearings is that it's, it's based on the win-lose paradigm. There has to be a winner and there has to be a loser. And oftentimes that creates a lot of dissension and a lot of 
frustration among the parties, and it absolutely obliterates, destroys relationships. But that problem is that it's expensive. It's expensive. I'm an attorney, I'll talk more about that in a little bit, but I know when I was practicing family law, I would charge $250 an hour with a retainer of $5,000 to start out before I would even get involved in the matter with you. So it's expensive. You're looking at at least $5,000 on attorney fees just to do a divorce and a custody action. I long thought when I was doing it that there had to be a better way to do this. And most importantly, we need to find a way where we don't create enemies with one another. So that's why I came up with the idea of let's do mediation and conflict resolution. Tell you a little bit about me. I'm a certified mediator. I was trained at the National Center for Mediation Education at Washington, D.C. in 1995. It's been a little while. I used to do mediation for the U.S. Postal Service in their employees program that they called Redress, helping them to resolve disputes between postal workers and management. And any of you know the, the cliche about going postal. Post office was, back in that time, a very violent workplace. And so they brought me in and other people like me to try to backtrack a little bit of that violence. Um, I was a trial attorney for 11 years. I started out as a public defender handling criminal matters. Then I went switched over into civil law and I was a city solicitor. And then in my latter legal career, I did family law. And it was family law that made me decide that I just can't do this anymore. There was never an end. So the next thing I did was went to seminary. Big switch from being an attorney to going to seminary. But I went to seminary and earned a Master's of Divinity degree and then was ordained as a pastor in the Southern Baptist Convention. So I'm still doing a little bit of pastoring right now. And the last thing I'm doing is I'm currently enrolled at Abilene Christian University in Abilene, Texas in their graduate degree program in conflict resolution. So I'm pretty familiar with conflict and how we can work through it. And my belief is, what's up there on the board? Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. And I believe that. My most proudest accomplishment is that I am a Christian. And I believe in the Christian modality of resolving conflict. My, my, my niche, I never can say that word, is to work with families, to work with small businesses, and to work with businesses. I believe in helping them to resolve conflicts, but most importantly, to protect relationships. You've heard me say that a couple times here today, but my goal is to protect relationships. I believe in win-win solutions, where each party walks away from the table feeling like they accomplished something instead of having something done to them. I believe in doing it less expensively. I told you I charged a retainer of $5,000 as an attorney. Mediation costs about $250 for a half day session and $500 for a full day session. Big difference between $5,000 and $500. Um, it's quick, you call me. I, if you call me and say you have a problem, you want to have it resolved, I contact the other party, whether it be by phone or by letter. If I tell the other person that there's, a, you know, that there's a request for mediation. I help them to understand what mediation is. And we're at the table within about two weeks if they agree to mediation. There's no other process that I know that can get you from in the door to the table to resolution in about two weeks other than conflict resolution. And lastly, my mantra again, I maintain relationships. Because it's important. We will all some we will always find a way to trespass against one another. I tell people when I was a lawyer, I said, there's only one thing that you can expect from people to do for you, and that is disappoint you. And so if we understand that, there's going to be conflict in our lives, whether it's with your daughter, whether it's with your father, whether it's with your mother. But we have to find a way where we don't destroy relationships because we can't exist in this, in this world or in this place by ourselves. We were just talking this morning about what's going on in this country with the new administration and how it's separating and dividing the country. 
we got to find a way where we can bring that back together because if we don't, we're not going to move ahead. And that's why I believe so firmly in conflict resolution. Doesn't cost me very much money to do it. I work out of my home office. I use Skype or I use other video conferencing services. If it's needed for me to sit down with the other party, I can go to a different, I have arrangements with a couple other businesses where I can use their conference room for about $50 for the day. And I pass that on to the clients. Um, we do a lot of work over the phone. We do a lot of work through email and we do a lot of work through um, just chatting. So it doesn't cost me very much to do this. Probably my most expensive costs are office equipment, like fax machines and telephones and computer and that kind of stuff. I rely on HIPAA certified video conferencing. Um, HIPAA, I don't know if you're familiar with what HIPAA is, but HIPAA is a law that says that you have to protect the private information of the clients that you're working with. So they do have video conferencing that is shielded, HIPAA, HIPAA certified. I use that for sensitive cases, like custody cases where we're talking about young children. And then we have non-HIPAA certified video conferencing that I can use. I do travel to sites. I do go out. If somebody wants me to come in, I will come to their business place and work with them. And like I said, we can meet in neutral places that I have available to me around the city. This is my contact information. I'm on Facebook, I'm on Twitter, I'm on LinkedIn. I'm on, I have two websites. I have, of course, two telephone numbers, and then I have a fax number. So what can you guys help me with? The first thing you can help me with is to let people know that you don't always have to go to court to resolve your conflicts. There's another <laughs> way of doing things, and I would suggest to you, it's a better way of doing things other than going to a courtroom. Can you imagine being a judge and having a docket of 50 cases that morning, and you don't know any of the people that are standing before you, and you have to work your way through 50 cases in about three hours, where you're deciding issues like who gets to have the children, how often can you see your children, how much are this person or this person going to pay for support of the children? Nobody ever thinks about the judge, but I can tell you it's a very difficult process and it doesn't have to be that hard. If you can get two people to sit down and just talk with one another, we can work our way through most of these conflicts. So I need you guys to let people know that there's another way of doing things. You can tell them about conflict resolution. I was telling somebody this morning that I looked on Yellow Pages and there's only about four or five people who are doing conflict resolution in Kent County. And most of them are attorneys. Um, as a former recovered attorney, I don't think very highly of attorneys, I just gotta be honest about that. Um, it's a noble profession, but I, I just don't trade off of the misery of other people. And the Bible speaks to that clearly. Um, my personal struggles, I'm a pastor, I'm a student, I'm a worker, and I do a number of other things. Like I sit on Veterans Court here in Kent County. So my calendar is overwhelmed. I need to find a way to manage my, my calendar. I need to find a way to deal with trying to get a business plan written. You have no idea how hard and how difficult it is to do a business plan. And that's why the, the program that um, Rich talks about Fast Track would be a good program for people to get involved in because they do help you to sit down and force you to work on a business plan. But you have no idea how difficult that is and how much time it takes. So that's the other thing I do, I'm trying to get that done. So I need you to get the word out and get public awareness. And then I need me to sit down and be more focused and more concentrated on what I'm doing. The last time I was here, and I know I was asked this morning to talk about when I presented in August, some of the suggestions to me were to definitively define my target market. Well, the problem with definitively defining a target market is everybody's my potential client. So how do I decide which ones are, I'm gonna work with more than others? That's I still haven't worked that one out, so if you guys have any suggestions this morning on how do you define a target market, 
given this nature of this business, that would be more helpful for me. The other thing I was told is that we should go out and do more public speaking. Well, I'm an introvert by nature. I don't like to go out and talk to people. But as a pastor, you can imagine I have to be for people every week and talking about different subjects. So I gotta find a way to balance within myself the reservations and the timidness and the shyness that I have versus the public persona that I'm supposed to be. This is my contact information. I have some brochures and some business cards here if you guys are interested in helping me get the word out about conflict resolution. And I'd like to thank you very much for listening to me this morning as we talked about Center for a Positive Humanity. Thank you very much. One of the things, I am an active member of the Chamber of Commerce. I'm pretty proud of that. I'm one of their five, I'm one of their few five-star members. So I go to most of the events that they have, most of the social events they have, as well as the business-related events. I'm on their military affairs committee, so I go to those meetings. Um, and I just really try to work through the Chamber. The other thing I'm doing is I try to reach out to businesses at least once or twice a week and say, listen, we have this, are you interested in becoming and doing just a free evaluation of the culture of your business? I haven't gotten a whole lot of takers on that, but that's the other thing I do. And that was one of the suggestions that came out of the last time I was here, maybe you could just offer to come in and do an assessment. So I've been trying it, people aren't real receptive, because I believe, not because they don't like the process, I believe they don't understand the process. You know, we're trained that when we have a conflict, what do you do? You pick up the phone and you call an attorney. And that's why the attorneys are there. Well, once you do that, then you start that whole negative process that I've been talking about, litigation. People don't understand that. You can pick up the phone and call Ron Garcia. And I can take you through your conflict and get a resolution that you'll be happy with and not cost you back to do. So that's part of the problem. People don't understand what conflict resolution is. And it's been around since 1990 or even earlier, but people just, we're creatures of habit. And we know that that's the way to do things. I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, just a question. I noticed your, the, the parent, uh, what is it? You call it parent, parent coordination. Parent coordination. Now I'm sure someone in the room has more information on this than I do. Like, Delaware State Law, any parent that's going through a divorce, domestic violence, custody, has to take a parent education class. If you thought about getting on that approved list, and, that way, and then it'll also provide you that uh, pathway with attorneys or individuals that they may be working with that really can't afford them to kind of use you as that second avenue. So, you know, one, again, tapping into the parents that have to take this course by state law, but also, you know, giving the attorneys the knowledge that, hey, there is a, another option for individuals that just don't have the resources for the attorney. So, Dana, that's true. It's a great idea. <laughs> you would go through the state, the children's department, or the family court manages that list. But it's a list of every county that you have to have certified to provide the parent education classes. Because everybody who goes through a separation and or divorce has to take the class. Yeah, that, special domestic violence class or special non-domestic violence. I understand the parent education program is kind of run by the Office of Children and Youth and Families. Well, it's actually run through the family court, but the kids department um, certifies them. Regina Johnson. Regina Johnson is the kids program right now. The last time I looked at their list, they had um, most of the major organizations like Dover Behavioral Health, um, Children and Family First, um, Delaware, I mean, what's it? Yeah. I forgot what the other big organization is, but they have very few small providers, small sole proprietors, or even small offices like myself. But, you know, I know the people at the kids' department. I used to work at the kids' department back in the early two, 2000s. But I, that's a great idea. You know, I look at it and maybe that's the way to do it, and getting in that way. I would just definitely second that. When we were given the list, it was only three or four small providers. They're giving their comprehensive list of any of our large providers. And the woman that ended up teaching our class was questionable 
to begin with. So I would have much rather had this option of like a like you speak about content resolution so intellectually, and she was intriguing. So I would have much rather gone through something like this than. And keep in mind, parent education, I don't know how long it lasts, what the process is, but it's to fill that square so that you can then proceed with your litigation through a fair report. So I, I mean, I, I wonder if most, most of the people I know doing it are mental health providers, therapists. I don't, I don't know if there's attorneys doing it, but it's really the sole, the sole action is to get that square filled so you can move on with your action. Our action, my, my job as a parent coordinator comes in on the other side. Once you've been to the judge, and I have a case now without speaking of the specifics, they file so many motions before the court over and over again that the attorney called me and said, would you please help this family? Because the judge is tired of seeing the family over and over and over again. And so I took the case on in about October, and they have one of the first things I did was establish with them is the next person that files a motion will pay the fees of the other party to go to court. And there has not been another motion filed since that time. There's only been one exception where the, the father who was paying support got a support order and asked the court to clarify the amount of the support order. But that's the only time they've had to go to court. And the, the mother and I, she called me whenever there's a problem. I'm getting more and more visitation for the father, which is his goal. So the process is working. The process is working. The problem is they only want to use um, PhDs in psychology, but I'm not here to intellectualize to you on how to be a parent. You know, I'm here to teach you, you're a parent, do your job, and this is how you do it. So i got to find a way to resolve that. Yes, sir. Hey, my would be more interested in this question. Of course, you would know way better than me, but it would seem that it's not an issue of whether people understand the process or that the service is there. Um, it, it, it does seem to me that people <clears throat> also, the law and the court system, are uh, adversarial by nature, and there has to be a winner. So yeah. instead of choosing a conflict resolution, they're going for, well, he hurt me or she hurt me, so, you know, predictively, I have to get back. So we're going to court, you know. Some of them may even be aware of conflict resolution, you know. May have those ideas already in their head, but they have to win. So now it turns into, okay, we're going this route because I have to be the winner. You know, I have to come out on top. So you have to be right. We call that getting your pound of flesh. That's what we call it. You feel like you, somebody's hurt you or trespassed against you. I want my pound of flesh. The court's going to give me the pound of flesh that I'm seeking. Often they don't. Often they don't. But you're right. It's a psychological component getting people past the animus and towards the desire for revenge and just saying, we need to resolve this problem. But even more importantly, I'm, especially in a place like Delaware, if I hurt you today, well, I, I won't, but if I do, I run, I run the risk that six months down the road, I'm going to walk in somewhere where I'm trying to get something, and you're going to be the person behind the desk to give it to me. Okay? And you're going to see me, and you're going to say, I know you. This happened to me before, not that I've hurt people, but people that are turning up in the weirdest places. And we have to stop hurting people because people remember. And, and yeah, you come to my office, you did something. My first thought is, I know that guy. You know, this is my opportunity to get back at you. And that's just not the way we should do things. We should, but you're absolutely right. It's a psycho, it's a psychological thing that we have to deal with. You're right. You're right. Uh, there is a professional association of arbitrators or mediators. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know the, the formal name, but have you looked at it? Are you a part of them or looked at it more than The largest organization is called Mediate.com, and they're an assemblage of mediators all throughout the United States. I have one of their providers here in Delaware. In fact, I'm a <coughs> mediator here in the state of Delaware on their, on their panel. There's other organizations called ACR, the Association for Conflict Resolution. They're another national organization. I'm with them, but they don't have a chapter in Delaware, so you have to go to Philadelphia to go to their events. Keeping in mind that Delaware is still a very small state. 
And most of the services that you'll find in like Pennsylvania or New Jersey or Mountain just aren't here in Delaware. So you, you got to do a little bit of travel to get to it, but that's a good idea. So I'm just saying, as, as I understand, when an arbitrator needed, I say arbitrator versus the uh, association's contact and, and they send one of their members or they say these members are available to those two parties who can be brought in for the arbitration. That's, as I understand it, this is how the court maintains or did here in Delaware, they haven't done it for a while. They maintain a roster of mediators. So when a family comes before, particularly in a family case, they can say, okay, you need to do mediation. They have mandatory mediation in Delaware. And this is the roster that you can select from. In fact, they have a court rule, 16A, that requires mediation. The problem is they haven't updated them yet at some time. And last time I spoke to them in, in November, They've told me that they're revising the whole process on how they do mediation and how they require a mandatory mediation in the state of Delaware. So, probably time for me to give them a call again now in February to see what else they've done. So, thank you for that. Well, well my, my close experience with what Ben Sue has been through an employer and labor issue for uh, between customer vendor uh, scenario where you're opposing uh, views that can't come to a resolution, so the arbitrator is brought in, everybody hear the facts and make a decision. And uh, again, from what I understand, you contact the, the associate, he provides the name to choose from. And, and that, so that's, that, I'm going to say that as a source for you to be on that list to be chosen for as you mentioned other scenarios, not, not just family conflict, but also. Uh, employee employee or, or resolution between two parties that they can't uh, come to a uh, common uh, But the thing that we were talking about with that, I would, I would uh, pursue that. Uh, you know, any, anywhere you're going to be looked at as a go to person, okay? And sometimes you got to start in with the institutional side before you can break out and say, well, from all the sort of local experience, I am. Because uh, it's, it's, it as you're learning in Delaware, uh, right, wrong, or different, it is who you know. And uh, yeah, Delaware is a small state. Yeah. And I tell people often that it's probably, in the interesting part about Delaware, it's also, the, the, for fact, of, for lack of a better term, the hardest state. I mean, if you commit a crime in Delaware, your penalty is going to be much harder than in Pennsylvania, New Jersey, or Maryland. And I'm not quite sure that why that is. Maybe it's because it is a small state. But everything is interconnected here in Delaware. I spoke to the chief judge of the family court in November, and he wrote a letter and sent it out to all the judges in the state for me that required parent coordination. But the other thing you have to remember is this. If I'm an attorney and I have my own business, and I'm charging you $250 an hour for me to go to court to do a custody hearing with you, to say, okay, I'm now going to let my parent coordinator come in who can do it for half that cost and prevent a custody hearing from happening. Cost effectiveness says, I may or may not support parent coordination. I mean, if my, with all the for my office, I need to make sure I take care of that. I need to make sure that my family eats. I need to make sure that I pay my bar fees and my continuing education fees and all those things. And if I'm giving cases away to the parent coordinator, what does that do to me as an attorney? So there's a number of tensions that are going on that you know that you just have to navigate your way through. And you're right, you know, you have to be out there to do it. Yes, ma'am. Um, first, first off, I want to say you're doing a great job. Thank you. Thank you. Presentation. Um, one of the things that you mentioned is um, that you may be part of the chamber. Um, that you're with different business uh, organizations, but my suggestion is just sort of a grassroots idea. Um, I come from education, school, America, and your services would absolutely be something that parents in those different areas would need. Um, you know, you have a lot of conflict with uh, different daycares. Um, you know, from that age all the way through uh, high school. Uh, so if there's any way that you could, you know, 
you know, when I say grassroots, I mean literally like those who do events, you know, put yourself out there with the principals, um, put yourself out there with teachers, you know, being a part of the community so that people know who you are. That's Delaware. You know, so if, if people don't see you in, in that vein, they may not reach out to you. You know, so just just a suggestion. Let me kind of flip this around. If we know of organizations, grassroots organizations, <coughs> that can use a speaker just to come in and introduce them to the idea of conflict resolution and mediation and negotiation, call me. I'm the, I'm my, I can work for my way of being there. I'm not beyond going out and talking to people, even though I'm, even though I'm an introvert, I'm not beyond going out. So if anybody knows of any opportunities where they can have a speaker to talk about my topic, Business cards, brochures, or cell phones. Thank you. Teaching you have in my record. Okay. I'm serious. I'm serious too. I am a partner. Give me a date, time, I'll there. Get your card. I'll call you. I'll say I got these dates available. I'm there. Come to my river. There you go. We'll get you hooked up. There you go. I got two. You will be Mr. Outgoing by the time you get through all the rooms. There's a website called Scheduler. Scheduler.com that can help you with organizing. Yeah. Yeah. Organizing and setting limits. Let me talk with you some more afterwards. Let me get the mic here for you. Gary, yes, sir. Um, I'm working with Don. I said, I, I, we, I go to the uh, local high schools. I would go to the local grade schools. I meet the principal and meet the guidance counselors. And then I would be taking one step further. It's about seven colleges on Route 13. And every freshman has a fight with their freshman. I don't know what college you went to. He's me, I'm sloppy, he puts the door up and he calls the door up. And, uh, and I would go to the high schools and the colleges and introduce myself and, and instead of these two people have the moving and switching to another roommate, I would you would say, maybe this is some solution. So grade schools, nursery schools, college, colleges, high, high schools, school. get yourself out in front of the educational area. Yeah. Uh, and just a thought or a suggestion or a recommendation, when you have the parent teaching conferences, Depending on the age of the child, it may be most advantageous to have the child participate in the discussion. If the child's three, it's even at a certain level, but if the child's 12 or 13 and says, my dad wants to take me like a little bit, it may be a different schedule. So I would at least have the child available as a, a, have a session with him. There's a part of my curriculum where I call meet the prize, and the prize is the child. So we go to, I think, with one family I just went to, Cheddar's around Christmas time and had them bring their, their son and we sat down at a family and with me there and we just kind of got to meet the child and you know children are you know people don't realize this I mean I went through it myself they consider that they think that children are very resilient and they are but they're also sponges and they soak up the conflict and they soak up the adversarial stuff that's going on around them they're not given a voice because they're children but they do feel what they feel, and they need to have an avenue too. So you're right. Have a child. I would need to try in a, in, a, in a neutral place, your office, without the parents there. Yeah. And, and one of the most famous right. things for children is, is coloring, or writing, or verbi, or uh, journaling. Because sometimes with coloring and painting, they can come out with expressions that just depend on being able to try. I'm with you to the point of meeting with the child, I'm not with you when it says without the parent there. Yeah. Because legally, I got you. I got you. I got you. That would be a nightmare, right? Unless both, I got you. I got you. Yeah, I got you. I got you. But thank you. You're welcome. Anybody have any other suggestions of how well we can get out there or what you can do in the community? Please avail yourself to the cards and the brochures on the table. They're there for you guys. Help me get the word out. I want to do this. I'm not going anywhere. And it's an important mission. Thank you. I'm are, sorry, you I'm sorry. are you on social media? Are you on social media? Yes. I want it to go away. Okay. Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn. I'm just not on Instagram yet because I don't understand. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think I'm enough. I think I'm enough. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Thank you, Doc.